66 million years ago, a predator bigger than a city bus roamed North America. You've heard its name, Tyrannosaurus Rex. But forget the movies for a second. This was a real animal, a creature built for a world very different from ours. Yet, what if this giant suddenly appeared today? Could something that colossal, powerful, and prehistoric adapt and thrive in our world of highways, skyscrapers, and social media? The atmosphere now might leave a T-Rex gasping for air. Some studies suggest that late Cretaceous air had higher oxygen, possibly up to 30 to 35 percent, than today's 21 percent. Dropping a T-Rex into our thinner air would feel like placing it at a high altitude, as if it was at the base camp of Everest. According to one zoologist, a modern T-Rex might need a more efficient respiratory system. Fortunately, many theropod dinosaurs had bird-like lungs with air sacs, which are highly efficient. Those could give T-Rex a fighting chance. Over time, it might also adapt by lowering its metabolism or activity level to use oxygen more sparingly. A slower pace of life and more rest between hunts could become its new normal in an oxygen-poor world. T-Rex evolved in a warmer world than ours. Global temperatures in the late Cretaceous were about 4 degrees Celsius higher than today on average, and there were no freezing winters in its range. Our modern climate would impose cooler seasons and even cold nights that T-Rex never experienced. How to adapt? It might seek out tropical equatorial regions where the heat and humidity still resemble its ancient home. If forced into cooler climates, T-Rex could face trouble. Unlike furry animals, it wasn't built for the cold. Fossil skin impressions tell us adult T-Rexes were mostly scaly, not fully feathered. They likely didn't have a thick insulation layer. A modern T-Rex might grow a bit of fluffy covering if it had generations to evolve, similar to how some of its smaller cousins had feathery coats. But a sudden appearance in a cold environment would leave it shivering. Being giant was an advantage in the Cretaceous, but in today's world, it could be a handicap. At 8 plus tons, a T-Rex would require a tremendous amount of food to sustain itself. Modern ecosystems have fewer gigantic prey animals. With scarcer food, natural selection might favor a somewhat smaller, leaner T-Rex over time. Paleontologists speculate that if the T-Rex lineage had continued, it might have either grown smaller and faster, or even larger and more efficient, depending on pressures. In a food-limited scenario, a downsized, modern T-Rex would have better odds, along with size adjustments it might need to store fat or endure long periods without eating, much like crocodiles or Komodo dragons do. Research suggests it was not a sprinter, perhaps reaching speeds of 20 to 25 kilometers an hour, around 12 to 15 miles per hour at best. That's slower than a galloping horse or deer, but still faster than a human can run. In modern habitats, many prey animals are swift, a T-Rex might not bother trying to outrun the fastest gazelles. Instead, it would adapt its hunting style. Expect a T-Rex to rely more on stealth and ambush, using cover to get close, than attacking with a sudden burst of speed. Its powerful legs could still accelerate it quickly over a short distance, enough to surprise a large target. Over evolutionary time, perhaps natural selection would favor individuals with slightly longer legs or more muscular builds for speed, or conversely, those that are more energy-efficient walkers. But even without major changes, a modern T-Rex would still be a capable mover for its size. It could likely trek long distances in search of food, maintaining a steady pace. Tyrannosaurus rex lived in a humid, subtropical habitat during the late Cretaceous. Fossils from the Hell Creek Formation show that its environment was a low-lying floodplain, dotted with rivers, swamps, and forested regions. Think of lush conifer forests mixed with palm trees and ferns, a landscape with warm temperatures year-round and abundant rainfall. Fast forward to today, that Cretaceous habitat is gone. Mountains have risen, sea levels dropped, and the climate has cooled. If T. rex were to survive now, it would seek out the closest match to its old home. The good news 
is that parts of our planet still offer warm, lush conditions reminiscent of the late Cretaceous. Experts note that land dinosaurs would find tropical and subtropical regions quite comfortable climate-wise. A large marshy region like the Everglades in Florida or the Pantanal in Brazil is steamy and full of life. Such places have broad rivers, muddy banks, and tall reeds, somewhat like a mini version of Hell Creek's environment. However, today's wetlands mostly have smaller creatures. The lack of huge land prey is a downside, though a T-Rex might snack on the abundant alligators or wild pigs in these areas. Rainforests are warm enough, but their dense jungle might be challenging for a creature the size of T-Rex. Also, big ground-dwelling prey is relatively scarce in deep rainforests. You won't find herds of giant herbivores in the heart of the Amazon like you had in Hell Creek. T-Rex might instead patrol the edges of forests and open clearings. The African savanna is in many ways an ideal stand-in for the late Cretaceous plains. Think of the Serengeti or Okavango region. Expansive grasslands dotted with groves of trees, a warm climate with a wet and dry season, and crucially, herds of large herbivores. This is perhaps the closest modern equivalent to the world of T-Rex. A T-Rex could feel at home under the African sun, moving between patches of Acadia trees and stalking prey across open plains. We'll discuss the prey in a moment, but from a habitat standpoint, a protected savanna or broad grassland might be the best place for a T-Rex to thrive today. A 65 million year leap in time would force T-Rex to adjust its menu. In the Cretaceous, it feasted on giant plant-eating dinosaurs. Today, those are long gone. So, what could replace them as prey? Likely the biggest herbivores available, similar in mass to its dinosaur prey. In an African savanna scenario, we would expect elephants, rhinoceroses, hippos, cape buffalo, giraffes. An adult elephant is comparable in size to a Triceratops or Edmontosaurus. Taking down such massive prey would be perilous even for a T-Rex. Just as lion prides today target elephants or giraffes with mixed success, a lone T-Rex would have to be strategic. It might prefer juvenile or weakened individuals. For example, a young elephant separated from the herd or an old sick giraffe lagging. Its attack would be brutal. A charging hit to knock the prey off balance, followed by crushing bites to critical areas. The T-Rex's bite force could crush through an elephant's leg bone or a rhino's thick hide. One or two well-placed bites might mortally wound even the largest mammal. Still, an elephant can fight back. A swing of its trunk or tusks could injure the T-Rex. We might see behavior similar to what T-Rex likely did with Triceratops. Target the less dangerous flank or rear, avoid those tusks or horns, and let the prey weaken from blood loss. Over generations, if hunting large, dangerous game became routine, natural selection might favor more intelligent hunting tactics or even social hunting. Outside Africa, a T-Rex might look to other regions. In South Asia, elephants and water buffalo could be targets. In Southeast Asia, perhaps large bovines like gaur or the last remaining rhinos. In North America, wild bison or moose would be among the largest land animals but a T-Rex might need to make do with multiple smaller kills. It could also prey on horses or cattle on ranch land, which would undoubtedly cause conflict with humans. In South America or Australia, native megafauna are largely gone. These might not satisfy its huge appetite unless it ate many of them. Thus, the highest likelihood of sufficient prey biomass is again in Africa or possibly parts of South, Southeast Asia. A hungry T-Rex is not going to be very fussy. We know from fossil evidence it could scavenge carcasses. In modern times, it would continue this behavior. It might trail behind vulture flocks or watch where lions and hyenas gather, then scare them off and claim the carcass. Its arrival would send any other predator running. Even a pride of lions would likely retreat from a feeding T-Rex rather than risk death. This means it could steal kills and subsist partly as a scavenger. Would humans be on the menu? It's a question everyone wonders. The short answer, possibly. But humans would likely be a minor part of its diet. If a T-Rex were roaming and encountered an unprotected person, 
it might very well see a bipedal primate as prey. After all, we're meaty, soft, and slow. However, we're far smaller than a T-Rex's usual prey. A single human at 70 kilograms would be a snack, not a full meal for a 7,000 kilogram dinosaur. Bringing a predator as massive as Tyrannosaurus rex into our modern ecosystems would create a complex and potentially tense dynamic. Humans have spent thousands of years distancing themselves from nature's most dangerous animals. Suddenly reintroducing the ultimate apex predator would pose major challenges for both sides. For ecosystems, the arrival of a T-Rex would cause significant changes. It would immediately ascend to the top of the food chain, rearranging predator hierarchies wherever it lived. Lions or wolves would be forced to surrender kills to this towering newcomer, possibly changing their hunting patterns to avoid direct competition. Herd animals, too, would have to adapt. Species unfamiliar with such an immense hunter might become more wary, sticking together closely or migrating differently to avoid known T. rex territories. Yet there could be benefits. A top predator like T. rex could balance ecosystems, controlling populations of large herbivores and indirectly benefiting plant life. It might even help maintain the overall health of prey populations by removing weak or sick individuals. However, the line between a balanced ecosystem and ecological chaos would be thin. Human response would be the ultimate factor in determining T. rex's survival. Could we learn to share our world with a creature from deep time? Or would we end up repeating history, pushing yet another apex predator to extinction? That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time!